tonight on the World Poker Tour. The biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. From the jewel of the Las Vegas Strip, we're at Bellagio for the final table of the WPT World Championship. Action going to the Irishman, John O'Shea. All in. And he's going all in, Mike. Well, he's moving all in. A nice play by him. He knows David Benyam's an aggressive player. Might be trying to push him around a little bit. He folds his hand. Well, John O'Shea taking down the first pot. Funny about him, that's he graduated from Dublin University. He started playing poker and he realized he could make more money in one day than he made the whole year as an accountant. He quit the job. He's a poker player. Another one figured it out. Well, it's definitely a competitive thing. I mean, I don't get a buzz out of gambling if you're taking the worst of it. It's attraction to easy money, even though it's not as easy as you think. I mean, it's like, as the, it's, the, it's the hardest way to make an easy li living, as what everyone says. But yeah, it's uh, the opportunity kind of to make money quick. So what do you want to play for? We do the spread betting. 10 points yeah. or a 10 euro point? Uh, Sterling. Sure. Sterling, right, yeah. Basically what that is is you multiply your front nine score by your back nine score and then you pay the difference. So generally works out between, somewhere between about 40 quid and two grand. The livestock is probably one of the best things after the money. <laughs> That's probably one of the best things about it. I mean, if it's sunny, during the day, you can just decide to do your work at night, go out. You really pick your own working hours every day. I hate it, but sure. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> it's the 1608, uh, really at 5-2, uh, because Laird and O'Meara. So obviously the, the, the clue is, like, O'Meara, he, he reckons he's no chance. Uh, just placing a bet on today's Masters. I don't really know much about golf, I just back for these guys and they generally tend to win so I don't ask too many questions. Well, we've got about eight grand on it so far, we're probably not going to get much more. A while, like a few weeks ago, this account was real good and they might have laid like 40 grand on it. But then once you win a bit off them, they start cutting you back more and more to the point that they eventually end up closing you down and don't lay you any bets. The vast majority of stuff I bet on, I would know who's playing. I just know that the information I'm getting off certain guys is very good information and then if you back it, you know, every day for the rest of your life you're going to make money. So far so good, I'm beating Marty by three points so far. But, three up on it. Yeah, three up. If you could get in the water here it would be a big help. Yeah, that's the Liffey. Marty, he won like three major tournaments all in the space of two years and then kind of hasn't been running too hot lately but that's the thing. You know, he's won 3.5 million in maybe that two year period. It can all come down to one or two tournaments as the prize pools are so big. Somewhere around 50% of like any given tournament poker result is going to be down to luck. Just saying the Irish Open this weekend, 15 is going to pay 15,000 and first is going to pay, you know, 700,000. That's why so many people roll up this weekend and put up their three and a half grand. It's like the lotto, you know, you only need to get lucky once. The guy who won it last year, I think, he got 20 quid off someone, put it on a horse for the Grand National. The horse won, played a satellite to the Irish Open, won it, played the Irish Open and a self survivor. So from the 20 quid, he ended up a few weeks later with like... 700. He ended up with about 750 grand, like... Good stuff. Well, I think I won small in the end. I thought I win like six or seven. We'll scratch that. 
So you really want to take your opportunity and go big when you get it. If I can let him off the hook. If you had to spend so much time on the phone, you'd probably get an extra few points out of there, right? Yeah, I'd probably burn up some energy. Uh, the Irish Open is the longest running tournament in Europe. It was the first big tournament I ever played. You know, it's kind of the Irish person's World Series. And, you know, there's always about $1 million for first. So it's obviously a massive chance for a big scoop. I think this is my sixth year playing it. I've uh, never had much success in it. I've never made it past day one. So, yeah, my own uh, record in it's pretty poor, but uh, I might change it this year. It's a pretty good table. You got uh, two to my right, Peter Roach, who's a pretty good player, Irish player, and then two to my left is a good American player. I don't know his name. He's obviously a big online player, so it seems like there's like three good players and uh, the rest of them. So they kind of be the ones we don't really want to play the big pot with. We want to kind of target the other spots to try and pick up our early chips at the moment. Uh, you're not German now, Austrian, Danish. Not, not a million miles out. It's kind of an insult to call a Danish guy a German. It's an insult to call an Irish person English, but no one really cares either. We haven't lost anyone, but I mean, this guy's got like 5,000, which just given the average is 20, that's pretty short. He's not exactly on life support, but he's not going well. Scandinavian, who hadn't been running too good, shoved all in. I mean, he has to have a reasonable hand. He doesn't have pure crap. I had ace queen of clubs. You know, a strong hand, but not a very strong hand. I mean, he's probably shoving with top 30 hands. My hand up the spectrum would be like, certainly a top 10 hand. So I made the call with ace queen. As it turned out, he had a small pocket pair of two trees. So he's ahead at the moment, he's got a pair. I need to improve my hand. So I need to make a bigger pair than his two trees. It was a good flop for him. I'll either hit an ace or a queen if I'm going to win the hand. The turn put me ahead, so then he needed to hit trees to win the hand. The river came a blank card, and uh, I got all of chips. All right, look. What's my day? Good luck. The action's picked up a lot. He's now lost 120 players uh, over a quarter of the field down. And you can see every pot's now getting contested because there's more money in the pot to play for, so everyone kind of wants a piece of it. So. Got about 50k, so I uh, haven't been involved in too many big pots, kind of been chipping up nicely. The odd bluff thrown in. Patience is a bit of a thing that, that you don't lose your composure and you just shove it in in any old spot. But you just don't go, right, well, I haven't had a good hand for a few hours, and I'm going with this. like. But you should never be bluffing in. It still felt like one. You're not going to turn your hand into a bluff. I think you got like queens or something. Queens or jacks. You're not giving much away. I can't make eggs what you could possibly have. I'm no closer to guessing. You know when you talk to them for a while. So you've done a pretty good job. You've got me now confused. Bring in the heat. Six time lucky. God loves a trier. It looks like I'm going to finally make day two of an Irish Open. I think I've got it maybe a little over 60k. Average is 35,000, so back tomorrow at 12, so look at the rugby suffer tomorrow, get those bets on, get some sleep, and then we're back in action at 12. I always had an interest in gambling, I suppose, playing in Irish college, and I was trying to make an extra bit, spend the money for the tuck shop. Then it got kind of serious when I went to college, and one night I was out drinking with friends and I ended up in a casino, drunk and uh, started playing a game. I didn't even know the rules, but I ended up walking out with about, you know, maybe 150 euro, which is a lot of money when you're a broke student. So I said, God, I don't even know, even know the rules. If I get to know the rules of this game, I'll make a fortune. <laughs> Let's see. Scandinavians are crazy. I'd prefer if he was here and I was there. But, uh, we'll see.
Take two, came in with a nice stack and a nice table. It's feeling pretty confident. Then there were two hands that really set me back earlier on. I, I mean, I've three bet a guy with ace 10, he's called with four or five. I mean, he's 33 to one to have flopped a flush and pretty unlucky. I mean, he had in this case. In another pot shortly after that, I flopped top two pair. You know, top two pair is going to be good like 90% of the time in that spot. And I ran into a straight. I cut. Oh. Got crippled, lost two big pots in a row. Pretty unlucky. Down to 12,000. I'm in kind of 12 or 13,000 in survival mode now, so try and find some spots and try and get a double up, try and get back in the game. So, next few pots are going to be crucial. We can't really afford to lose any from here. <laughs> I'm all in. All in. Pass. At that point, I was down to maybe 13, 14,000, so I was low, but I was by no means out of it. I still had a workable stack, and I looked down at ace 10, so I shoved them all in. You got everything you got? No, I got some 25s as well. That's everything. It's a bit of a tricky situation, but I decided. I definitely had a, probably a better hand than he did, and he took a while, and then he called me with King Queen. You're just like, please let me win this one, you know? Um, either do or you don't. Just the way things were going that day, things were going disastrously, and the Queen was the first card out. Needless to say, I lost that hand as well. Nice so hand, good luck. Good luck, Ivan. Okay, John. Thank you, mate. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. I'm just one of those days in poker. Pretty, pretty dejected. You know, I kind of come with like some high hopes and less than an hour, it's all over. Like, so I feel pretty empty right now. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Oh, fuck's sake. My working hours, I mean, my busy time is the weekend. On a Friday night, you're more likely to get someone who has been working for the week and then just has a load of cash. They might reward themselves by depositing a bit of money online and having a spin. People who work, that's when they have their free time, is uh, at the weekend, so that's when you want to be around to play with them. You're just kind of waiting for guys to come in drunk. Um, I mean, you're more just looking for a name you don't recognise, <laughs> jumping on them. So what I'm going to do is just open tables and um, see who joins. It's kind of like going fishing, I suppose. I mean, you could sit here for three or four hours and get nothing, or it could take off and you could be here for like, the birds are tweeting outside around six and like, you're still going. It's calling me down with top pair. Jeez, your man must be pretty bad. I'll uh, check out who he is. So, Faya Pokera is from the Russian Federation and they're down 200,000 already. They basically, since they started playing poker, it's been a straight line curved down, which basically says like, you know, they're just brutal. When you're playing people like that, I put a note on the player, just record what happened in the hand. Then when I log in on my computer, I can um, see what I've written about that player. The game I'm in, there's 10 people on the waiting list. So basically everyone else is waiting to get in with this player as well. As I go, you know, fish, fishes and sharks, you know what I mean? That's what you do, you're just waiting to, waiting to hook one of them on your line and then rip them to shards. Like, and then, if there's no really easy money, you're going to look for the next easiest money possible. And then, like, what happens if you leave six sharks swimming around, like, if one of them, they turn on the weakest one and then he gets ripped to shred and then, like, that's why, like, some of the pros go bust. The bad player left the game. If your man had stayed, the game would have kept going forever. But as soon as he left, everyone quits the waiting list and quits the game. It's quite amazing. I got a heads up table. It's kind of when you play a guy one on one. It's like pretty active stuff. I need a six, uh, spade, and ace. So I've lost that. So he won 10 grand off me there. 
I always kind of find it funny, you know, like played the Irish Open last weekend and like, you know, you paid your three and a half thousand and it's kind of a big deal and then be here online, you know, every two minutes you're putting three and a half thousand in and sometimes you're putting three and a half thousand in with absolute crap, like, fuck, what's 13 grand hit a club on the river? That's fucking grotesque. I'm losing about 15,000, I think, maybe more. You know, if you spoke to him right now, he probably thinks he's getting the best of it and certainly one of us isn't. You don't spot the sucker at the table in the first few minutes, you're the sucker kind of thing. You could be sitting opposite a multi-millionaire who's just, you know, playing for laugh, or you could be playing, you know, someone who's playing with their case money. The money could mean nothing to him or could be could mean everything to him. So if you're that worried, you can always give the money back at the end. But I certainly haven't. When you lose, you lose. Got to pay up. No, that's 25,000. He's on tilt now. I got him. He's making mistakes he wasn't making a few minutes ago. Fingers crossed we can kill him off. <laughs> go to bed. Even though I'm too sick, I'll probably just get in another game. So, yeah, we got him down now to his last 1,700 euro. Finally. Da -da -da -da. I broke him. This guy, he probably would have went to the credit card already with my gut feeling. I, th I don't think he's got too much money in his account. I don't know. I'll give him a chance anyway. There's no rush. He might come back. I mean... He's definitely playing a bit rattle. Like, it'd be a bit unfortunate now if he doesn't at least give me another five grand because uh, be right back. So uh, he's gone for money. <laughs> he's given me the B or B, so hopefully it's at least five. Um, that's a good sign anyway. He's got a working credit card. So hopefully that'll be the start of some more. Monte Carlo for the European Poker Tour Grand Final. It's the biggest event in Europe this year. It's 10,000 euro win for the main event. It'll be about 800 runners, 8 million in the prize pool, 2 million for first. It's quite a bit of money up for grabs, hoping for a deep run. So Monte Carlo, it's like the place of the rich and famous. You know, loads of stories, the high stakes gambling. You have to have a couple of million in your bank account to live here. The gambling that goes on, it's even bigger than Vegas. It's the biggest stuff in the world that goes on here. This is the highest level you can play poker at, so yeah, you're competing against the best of the best here. There's just guaranteed to be like three guys on your table who are just playing perfect poker. So day one's all about surviving and getting through, trying to just increase your stack a bit. What hand did you have? How are you thinking? That's strange. It's nine, or something. They're continental European players are kind of different. Like the Irish players are kind of type bad, but the French players love bluffing and, and the Italians play with a lot more passion. If you call an Irish player, like, you know, he'll always have a pair or something where these guys are likely to be in an absolutely nothing. They don't really mind uh, firing their chips around a bit faster. So it's certainly a faster game, certainly than the Irish Open. You'll see um, a lot more bigger pots early. I, I definitely prefer it. It's more action, so it's more fun at the table. Like. I fear that he hit nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Close. First day, I drew a really good table. The three old guys were pretty bad. That, that's how you're getting paid. I mean, they, these good three old guys, they're going to pay your wages. I mean, whoever gets their chip is going to be in a great spot. So you're basically just sitting there hoping you're the lucky one who gets the golden ticket to get their chip. And sometimes it's your day and you, you're the one who gets them and sometimes you don't. Yeah, he's like probably chip leader of the whole tournament today. It's not three people out of the table. Like, there were two really bad guys on my right and left, and uh, I was hoping I'd get to eat one of them, but uh, he got both of them, and then he got quite lucky in another pot against someone else. There's 40 people knocked out of the field. I mean, it's not even one per table gone as the average, and you can knock three out in this table, which is uh, pretty impressive. And I play pretty aggressive, and a chance maybe getting some chips with him later, so Let's see how it goes. Midway through the day, I picked up two kings. Someone had raised, it came to me, two kings, lovely re-raise, so I put in a, what's called a three bet, so I've raised it up. Another guy has four bets, so he's put in another bet of maybe like 6,000. 
So there's about 12,000 in the pot. I'm just looking for the board to come off with no ice. And the board comes kind of ideal what I was looking for. And he goes all in. I think he had remaining like 18,000. I called quickly with my two kings and he had ace king. There's three ace left in the deck. He has to hit an ace in the turn of the river. There's not much you can do, you're kind of helpless. That's the whole thing about poker. I mean, you've done the skill bit of the game and then you're at the lap of like the poker gods or the dealer or whatever. I mean, an ace comes out and I'm going home. So it just holds your breath and hope, I suppose, is all you can really do. The day had gone pretty much against me all day, so I was just like hang in there and hopefully I'll find a spot to double up. And yeah, I'm on 50k now, so just a little bit over average, but uh, the tables got pretty difficult. I mean, this guy to my left is quite bad, but uh, everyone else other than that uh, is pretty competent. There's like four or five really good online players now at my table. It's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, the last hand of the day, a bad old guy, and even worse old guys, replaced the old guy's busted, and he's just running real hot. I picked up two jacks, so I put in a big raise. The old guy calls, which is ideal. I get a pretty ideal flop, 3-3-2. Three, three, Turn comes off an ace, so he puts in a small bet, which I call, and then the river comes, and I check. He checked behind, and he had ace two, so that was pretty disgusting. He didn't have too many cards to hit. He had five cards left in the deck to hit, and uh, he's hit one on the turn. I mean, if he doesn't hit his ace or his two, I'm gonna finish on like probably 70,000. So that's pretty annoying, but uh, what can you do? Finish the day on 40,000, probably a pretty good result all in all. So unfortunately, I just didn't get any hands at the start of the day when the bad players are around. So it doesn't mean there's not much you can do. You can't bluff these guys, so uh, you can't be going too wild. So I've. I've hung in, I've played a good game today, I'm pretty happy with it, so um, hopefully I can uh, come back tomorrow and run up a stack. Oh god. Bird just shot in my head. Which, uh supposed to be good luck, but I'd rather they didn't. I'm not that superstitious. I'd rather not have shit in my head right now. Be really annoyed now if I don't go good today. <laughs> First level started. No one was going too mad. Played reasonably tight. I think I finished the level with maybe 45,000. Increased my stack by 5,000. Nothing special. Midway through the second level, I had Ace King, which would be, you know, would be seen as probably the joint third best hand with Queens. So out of 228 possibilities you're in joint third place, the only two hands that have you beat are Kings and Aces. Given the fact that you've an Ace and your King in your hand reduces the probability massively that they've got Kings or Aces. When you got Ace King, you're just thinking of how to get your chips in the middle. Ace King certainly a hand I'm happy to go to war with. Some Germans opened up. I've re-raised him, he re-raised me again. And at this point, I mean, he can't really fold ace-king. And I shoved all in. I'm thinking he can have ace-king as well. Small chance he can have ace-queen. He can have absolutely nothing. You know, people just decide to put the pressure on. It's the only hand you're worried about seeing are two aces. The riding's on the wall at that point, you know what I mean? You need a miracle to get out of trouble there. An ace come on the flop. Not that it really matters, but I was thrown dead after the turn. Yeah, you got me covered, don't you? Yeah, you got me. Good luck. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, what can you do? Like, so I've got the third best hand, I found the best hand. He's like 80% favoured against any hand, so he just wants as much carnage as possible. And uh, I supplied it. I have a pretty good week, just under $100,000 in poker so far. One of the better weeks of the year, so I'm reinvesting it all in uh, this weekend games. The Champions League final, and then there's the Heineken Cup final. 
I'm going to have a big bet on Bayern Munich to win the Champions League. And I'm going to have somewhere between maybe twenty and $40,000 in Ulster. All in all, I'm going to put the whole 100000 down across the very market. It's probably one of the busiest weeks of my year. It's two big games on I and mean, there's a lot of stuff on online poker. So you got to make hell the sun shines. Push the edge. Difficulties are getting on. As soon as you become a good winner within six to eight months, no bookie will want to take your bet. The bookie's like within a 10 mile radius of my house. I can't get on anywhere. So, you know, you do a bit of work on like the kind of customers bookies are trying to lay. People my age don't have 10 grand to be putting on the premiership at the weekend. Then the kind of people who have that are older people or like drug dealers or something like that. Often I just like show on my drug dealer tracks it and cycle around to the north side or the arse end of Tala and they'll lay me 10 grand on the same bet, not a problem. Because it's the business they're looking to take. It's a crazy, they'll take any amount of money in the slightly rougher areas. How are you? I mean, it'd be pretty standard to have $120,000 on a Saturday of sports, but I'd usually have it spread over a lot more games. What we say in the business, more variance. Over the course of 15 bets, you're probably supposed to win two bets and you get your money. But like here, your big risk is on two games. It's the end of the season. You're either going to win big or lose big. That's a bit sweaty, but sure, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's win big. What I want to happen today is Ulster at three points at half time. There'll be no tries scored and a three point Leinster win is the ideal result for me. Leinster winning by more than five points at half time. That's a bit of a disaster. Bayern losing the game. That's the wipeout scenario. <laughs> That's the 100 grand down the drain. It's a try. Fuck. Ah, fuck off. Fuck. Right, so we'll go across, are we? Fuck's sake. Oh, 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 nice. oh, oh, nice. oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I knew if us were going to win, they had to start well. So they got a penalty, they're treating it up, things are looking good. And then Leinster struck, got two tries. And, you know, Leinster have been bad starters in a few of their recent games. And on the flip side, Ulster have been good starters. So, you know, when that didn't happen and that went against you, I knew my bets were dead in the water up and then the Lancer ended up blowing them away. Oh, fucking retard. That's uh, about fifty thousand dollars down the Swanee. My dad told me when I was younger, never bet more than you're prepared to lose and I was prepared to lose it, so I mean I have maybe five million of bets a year and I'm gonna lose you know, just supposing they're all even money, I know I'm gonna lose maybe two point two five you know, million of them, and I'm going to win 2.7. At the end of the year, you're left with 500 grand. That's the 10% edge. You're only trying to grind out a small edge. So, losing a lot of money is just part and parcel of it. So you can't you can't get too upset when it happens. So all hope's not lost yet. Wait till uh, wait till the end of the next game before we get depressed. A lot of lads inside have big bets on Bayern now. So in the room over certainly over a quarter of a million. Yeah, if Bayern don't win, the mood will be bad. But uh, if Bayern win, it will get me back in the game, like end of day bit level. Byron dominated the game and then eventually, uh, I think it was in the 82nd minute, they get a header and it's 1-0 up, happy days, the room goes wild. Get in there! Oh. You saying Muller is shy and him saying they're not going to score from a draw. <laughs> That's fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Swinging around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, Robbie, you fuck. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I have a free line. So I should just always score in the big game. Really make the top five in the highlight show of bad days, that's for sure. I never really risk more than 100,000 a day because I don't know. It'd be a bit gross to lose any more than that. Like So, uh, yeah, today's pretty much the maximum amount to lose my loss. So it's, uh, it's about as bad as it gets. Dad, do you remember, remember when we were playing poker when I was 10 and you took all the money off me? Well, you can't. <laughs> that was teaching him a lesson. Because I remember there was a big pot. My younger sister was playing as well, and she dropped out because our auntie used to give us all pennies and two peas when we went on holiday. So we each got maybe two or three pounds. And so Orla had done about a pound in it. So she left, I stayed on. Obviously, I couldn't leave too much value in the pot. Then eventually, he got two jacks, won the pot. It was about cleaned me out. It was all my money for the holiday. And then uh, <laughs> expect me to give it. Give no, it I didn't back. expect you to give it back, but Mum wanted to give it back, but you wouldn't give it back. So I, was, I got no sweets for that holiday. <laughs> Just a lesson. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's fair enough. If you gamble, you lose. Like then a few years later, when I was at uh, clean someone out in Irish college, <laughs> tell them the same story. When you gamble, you lose. To pay up, I had to go to the bank and go away. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know who told me that you were leaving KPMG. I did. did you I told you in the kitchen. Oh, you told me. You just came in from work oh, yeah. and I said I'd quit. Hey. Wouldn't have been what I'd uh, have, uh, had in mind. Had in mind. Ah, I suppose. I think, I think the exact quote at the time was when I told you, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have drawn it that you would have. Ah, well, you, had, you got through a new university, but I. You, would have rather that you do the chartered accountancy and then kind of go after that. It's worked out so far, but the big thing is you're obviously to fear the addiction, you know, yeah. that you can't give it up. Or you get into debt on it, you know, and things like that. But that's whether you have your head screwed on or you haven't, that'll time will tell on that. Won't you? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you didn't want to end up as a grey haired partner. Not that yeah. you would have better ended up as a partner in KPMG. I uh, yeah. would have easily. All right? I would if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that hard. Huh. You'd obviously prefer them to be happy with it, but I suppose kind of what I said at the time as well was like, he educated me to think for myself, and now I'm thinking for myself. At the end of the day, I just backed myself. I thought I could make it, and uh, that was it. I mean, if you end up a loser, everyone's going to think you're wrong. So time's going to tell. It was a calculated risk, one, the first of many. Like, I mean, there was definitely shaky times where I could have ended up Jack and I did, but it's um, what I wanted, you know what I mean? It's my life. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There we go, Brady. When are you going to Vegas? Saturday, Saturday morning. Is Yeah. When are you going back then? I'm back on the 10th of October. What? 10th of October? My goodness. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is probably the longest time you're going to be away for four months, isn't it? Well, John's the, isn't the best for keeping in contact. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep. You have you to know. text him every and say, are you dead yeah, or alive? Right. Yeah, yeah. So I let them know if there's something wrong, they'll hear all about it. <laughs> and then he rings up and he's half dead. I've been working for 14 hours. And I tell him to go out and get yeah, a run, have a run for himself. I have no interest in the, the gambling world at all. Ah, uh, you think it's great. I do not. <laughs> you do. I'd much prefer to see him doing a, a proper job. You know right, John? Yeah. And I tell him that all the time. I think he trained to be an accountant, isn't that right, Dad? <laughs> <laughs>
Even at McDonald's, yeah. anywhere. I, I just know. know if my parents were alive, they'd be on their ha- on their knees at 24 hours praying for him. Well, right, John? Well, uh, my attitude would have changed because John was doing it. I would have thought mm. it was uh, a low life. <laughs> <laughs> my sentiments echoed. Uh, but you see, secretly, poker, yeah. secretly, his dad admires it. He doesn't admit it, but he admires it. I tell John, addictive. think of the poor father going home with no money, n- for no food for his children. Mm-hmm. He's lost all his money in a bet. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not the ma- people John gets the money off, he tells me. <laughs> three out of every hundred people who gamble make money, and three out of every hundred people who gamble become a problem gambler. Three out of every, I think three out of, more than three out of every hundred people become a problem gambler. No, so well, according to the Rutland Centre. No, the only thing is, it's not, it probably not like drugs. Is so far as you, you do your body in, but if it, if it goes wrong for people, it's a, it's a disaster. I don't ask what he puts on in bets, I don't ask what he wins or what he loses. I did hear from Fiona at the weekend, a big loss. I lost 100 grand. <laughs> she loves the big loss. I prefer not to know. Yeah, I like the big losses. <laughs> I think you might see the light then. Mm. Anyway. I'm off to Vegas on Saturday. Vegas is to the highlight of the year. It's the World Series. It's basically, I suppose, the equivalent to the Poker Olympics. The amount of money over there is just colossal. All the best players in the world will be there. And Vegas is a tough place to go. Some years I've gone over and I haven't played well. And, you know, you can lose a lot of money very quickly because playing with some real good players. But on the flip side, my two biggest scores have come in Vegas, and that's for coming fifth in two tournaments, uh, which would be like more than the prize pools for coming first in Ireland. So, I mean, if you, if you run good, the sky's the limit. I mean, one of my friends own won 1.8 million there last year in a tournament, so um, that's the goal. Job. One, two. Rob is a personal trainer. He's been over here training us, just getting us out, getting us fit, keeping us in shape. And a lot of people come over to Vegas, act the just go out drinking and like lose their mind and lose all their money. So our plan was, you know, to bring Rob over and train and you know, kind of stay focused and make loads of money. That's one to the end and back, right? Yeah. Let's keep the, keep the speed up, come on. Let's go, let's go, come on. Sit the chest out. I am um, sent over $400,000 to gamble with. Uh, at this point, I have lost it all. Bought into the main event tomorrow for 10000 and that's my last uh, chance to get out. Otherwise, I'll be going home, having lost 400000 in Vegas. Lost maybe like six or 70000 tournaments, and lost the m- most of it online. You know, I've probably had run the cards like this two or three times before in the six years I've been playing. This is obviously the worst because I've been playing higher stakes. I wouldn't say I did everything right, but I certainly did a lot right. It's a normal job, I'd be going home with my wages, but it's not, that's the nature of the game. I'm going home, losing a record amount of money. That's why most people can't stomach this job. Last 70 metres, try it out, come on. Stay up, stay up. Not finished yet. And walk. I knew the guys, they, I know they bet big and all, but seeing it in real life and looking at them playing line and going to a real live cash game and seeing how much they put in the pot. Some pots are someone's salary for the year and it's just it's incredible to actually see. Six, eight, nine, you have to have a really good mental attitude to be doing this. I have to respect the guy for what he's gone through over here and he's like losing that amount of money is guys go off track but John's very focused and he, he's probably the one guy who sticks to his training out of the whole house like he's the most focused out of the lot. So uh, this is the house where we've been staying for the summer. We got uh, Rob, Rob Smith, let's train. He's supposed to be over here training us for the summer, but instead he's uh, just cleaning us all out in pool and bowling instead. So uh, practicing for some money games later on. 
Dermot plays about 20 hours online a day. You'll never see him off the computer. How much are we winning today, Dermot? Uh, it's none of your business, John. Uh, After that comment. What? After that comment. Uh, go on, it must be about 50,000 or something stupid. Everyone else is losing except for Dermot, he just cleans up. Out here is a pool in the hot tub. We have a few hippopotamuses resting there in the summer sun. <laughs> <laughs> There's nine of us living here. So obviously you can get a bit tetchy at times, especially when most people are losing. By and large, you got on pretty well. It's been good crack so far. So there's like eight poker players. Rob's obviously just training, so he's not playing. Six of us are losing, and two of them are winning small. And like when I say winning small, maybe winning 10 or 20 grand. And then the backdrop of that, you got me like losing 400,000. The house is certainly down a lot at the moment. Many thanks to me, so I'll take responsibility for that. Just now, you just gotta kinda keep trying to do everything right, keep the head. A lot of people just panic and lose their mind and don't keep doing what they do and end up burning off the rest of their money. Tomorrow is the World Series main event. That is the World Cup, like, you know, this is obviously the biggest event in the year for any poker player. You're obviously hopeful. And, I mean, I've taken the last few days off, been training, just focusing on this event and just trying to go out and play well. First place is 8.2 million, you know, all the way down to like maybe 16, you're getting over half a million. So yeah, I mean, a deep run in this uh, could solve a lot of problems. The money I lost, I suppose I could afford to lose in some ways. I mean, obviously I got my house, my car and some savings on the side that like, I don't consider that money to be gambled with. The poker world is always hiring, but it's also always firing. I mean, like, if you are actually Egypt, you'll go broke pretty quickly. I've been playing for six years now and I haven't gone broke yet, so fingers crossed. First day, some old American, he's raised, I've re-raised, and then he shoved all in. He seemed to be getting a bit frustrated anyway, but uh, he's actually had, had a pretty big hand. Uh, two queens. Unfortunately for him, I, I was holding the best hand, two aces. My hand held up when I sent him home, sent him back to Nebraska. I ended the day at 47,000, which is probably around average. In some ways, a little bit disappointing because I had quite a good table. It was like a chance to maybe mass a stack of 100,000 or so. Oh, I've got enough punches and knocks this summer to, you know, you just dust yourself down and keep going. So, staying positive and hopefully I can pick it up now the next day. Started day two, I have an ace jack and uh, I bet quite big. Some old guy called, there were three clubs on board and then the turn was like up sixes and he's gone all in and I called and he had a set. The set is three of a kind when you have like a pair in your hand and one on the board. So it's kind of pretty unfortunate for him. I have an ace jack of clubs, so I flopped the flush draw. My hand held up and I won that pot. Probably keep it tight now, end of the day at 150. I mean, 150 was like the goal for the end of the day anyway, so I suppose I'm on track. And day off tomorrow, relax and hopefully come back. 150,000, I'm in a good spot and try and make a run on day three. The weekend before the Champions League, I think I had maybe like over 800. So if that went, weekend went well, I was thinking, yeah, I'll have just under a million. Obviously that went weekend, went shit. Lost 200,000 that weekend. Lost 400 in Vegas. So now I've probably like, maybe $200,000 around that. So yeah, it's quite a big fall. <laughs> I mean, you could get like, beat yourself up over and go, oh my God, why did I gamble? But I mean, 18 months ago when I started off and paid off my house and all that, I started off with like, a hundred thousand, you know what I mean? And then I spun that all the way up, and obviously I've fallen back down again. But like, you know, maybe if someone told me 18 months ago you could be sitting in Vegas with like a quarter of a million, do you want, would you take it? I probably would. I suppose a lot of people like in gambling, they get stuff that they shouldn't necessarily get. I mean, they run good, they get lucky, and then they lose it and they fall back. And then they go chasing what they had, even though they probably shouldn't really have it, instead of maybe being happy with what they have. Oh, 
put it wipe out. So I'm not going to like go after and feel the need that I need to get 400,000 back tomorrow, next week or whatever. I'm just going to get what I have and try and build forward with that. Ready? Day one and day two, the plan's pretty similar. I mean, like, it's like tomorrow, it's day three is the day you kind of need to make your move. It's been a pretty tough summer, but I don't think it's affected me. I think I'm playing pretty well and pretty relaxed. Put that out of my mind and I'm really hoping I can make a big run in this one. Day three, I've been in a lot of pots with this young Italian guy, like real aggressive and it's just in the dinner break. Like a lot of people are getting up to leave on the break, so like all the young guys always like see it as a good opportunity to rob the blind, so he's gone all in. I was delighted with my two queens, I called them. Unfortunately for me, he had uh, two aces. The flop was all low, it was a good flop for him. And then finally the Queen's come in the river. I sent him back to Italy then with that one. We are at the end of day three. Bagged up my chips there, got 512, just over half a million. Certainly today I think I played like near to perfect. Puts me in a pretty great spot for tomorrow. I'm down to the last 11% of the field. Hopefully make the 10%, get paid and kick on from there and go for a big score. I don't know, just try and be here tomorrow night talking to you again with a big stack is the plan. Kind of been playing quite conservative, mainly just staying in the pack. Got in a position now to have a shot at the big money, so pace is picking up now, so I'll probably take out the whip and give the horse a bit of a crack today. Oh, this guy's very good now. He's cashed for like 1.8 million lifetime, so that's pretty impressive. So he's certainly the, probably the best player at the table. I don't know, I, I heard the lads talking about this guy, Jeffrey Gross. Yeah, he's cashed for 650,000. And then finally me. Jesus, that guy must be good. <laughs> There's all my results of cash for just under a million. Hopefully it'll be over a million by the time this tournament's finished, but we'll see how it goes. Today, 70% of the field's gonna get knocked out, so hopefully I can survive. Started day, got in a pot with a just kind of a loose French guy. I two queens, and then he's re-raised again. I don't have the best time, but like he either has me beat or he's on a kind of a wild bluff. So if he's on a wild bluff, I want to give him an opportunity to bluff all his chips. So I've just called. Then he's bet big on the flop again. He had queen six. He's on a complete bluff. I mean, the probability I win that hand is like 93%, and he ended up making a flush against me and got there. So it was kind of annoying to lose uh, quite a big hand there. I kind of need to get moving at this point. I've gone critically low and a guy to my right who's pretty active. I mean, he's raising a lot of hands a lot of bad hands as well. He's raised. I've got ace nine, it's pretty close. I mean, I don't mind folding here, but I only had 300,000. If I can get him to fold, I'm gonna pick up maybe 50,000 in the pot. And ace nine is better than the average hand he's raising with here. So I've shoved all in. Unfortunately, he actually has a big hand this time. He's ace king. So I'm in pretty horrendous shape. I'm probably like 5% to win the hand, which uh, isn't ideal when you're all in for your tournament life. Got a kit, an ace and a nine, or two nines to win the pot.
start to put a dent in the loss, I suppose. I got uh, 52,000 for uh, my efforts in this tournament, so I suppose about 10 in. So if you take that away, I got 45 profit or something. So that's uh, 10% of the losses back, but uh, baby steps is not right. I mean, I was hoping to get it all back in one go here, but that's not the case. So we'll uh, take a few weeks off and we'll get back playing, playing online, just grinding away, trying to make 10, 5, 5 10, 20 grand. 50, 60, keep going, so uh, yeah, that's the plan for now. It started with nothing, you know what I mean? I started off playing free rolls, started with no money, and I built it up. I mean, I think the important thing is how you deal with your, when the curve's going down, you minimise it down and maximise it when it's going up, so that's the way, that's the way I've choose to make my living, so you know, just got to deal with it, and um, you know, it's part of the game. The thing they say is like the good players, Close to the kind of average players, as they deal with the bad times a lot better. So, you know, you've just been tested, so you've got to, you've got to battle through and try and turn things around. If I had a run like I had here for a few months, I'd probably just have to give it up. I mean, if I'm not making money, I'm going to go and do something else. I mean, gambling's not fun if you're losing, <laughs> it's only fun when you're winning. Like, I don't want to be a washed up loser. So, uh, for now, I'm sticking to the plan. And, you know, I've been here before and I've turned it around. And, come back stronger for it every time so that's the plan again.